gears, guys. We're gonna talk gears today, and I'm at Emag, and we're with my buddy Kenny, and we're gonna talk about how we can take a raw blank all the way to a finished product at the starting station with one operator from beginning to end. Kenny, how are we today? Good, how are you? Very, very well. So let's talk about this process. Let's talk about the inverted machining. Let's talk about the autonomous machining and what we're able to do for your customers. But let's start with the fact that you start with a raw blank and come off with a finished product that's normally in a completely different area of a machine shop with a yep. separate operator, right? Exactly, yeah. This line is completely integrated. We have a VL3 Duo which does the turning operation, and then we, we bring it in with our track motion into our hover, our K300. So what we're standing in front of now is the roll blink comes in, and we're able to do, you call it op 10, I'm very used to calling yep. it op 1 yep. or op 2, but we have op 10 and op 20, yep. where we're doing the OD and the ID, and then we get it ready to send it over to the hover on the other side. We're doing it all invertedly as well, which we all know at this point, helps with the chip evacuation, right? Exactly, yeah. So chips are, are a big thing, you know, for, to uh, reduce tool breakage and stuff like that. So, you know, being inverted like that, we, we can reduce a lot of the, the chips and the tool change time. And I know you're the guy that's helped set up this machine. So not just with breaking uh, some of the inserts or something, we could actually yeah. go deeper in the cuts. You mentioned a drill that's in here right now yeah. that plows through material deeper in the cuts, better finish, faster cycle times. That's all part of the combination of what works with EMAG, right? You guys are always thinking about how to give your customers the best product in the fastest times because you guys typically focus on high production Mass as well, production, don't you? Yes, definitely. We want the most amount of parts cut in the least amount of time, so. And this one, we're for the most part doing green machining, yep. right? Am I soft, correct in thinking it's, it's that? Soft turning, yep. So some soft turning on the material and we're taking it from this roll blank we're looking at here, right? Yeah, exactly. What's op one look like, or op 10? So this is our op 10, we'll, we'll come in with our drill, we'll do a, a few chamfers and some steps and some fa face finishing and other uh, chamfers, OD and ID. And what's op t uh, 20 for you, op two for me, what's <laughs> op 20 for you look like? So op 20 is the finish of the step here, um, turns it down to size to get it ready for our hopper. It's our, um, as we call it, our blank. And then we have the piece at the end, which we all know to be a gear, but it looks yeah. like art to me. It looks like yeah. a beautiful piece. And this is typically done in a different operation, in a different room, yep. in a lot of places who make gears, but you guys have the ability to send it through this whole setup and bring it out on the same place where you put it yep. for easy at, uh, adding of the raw stock and removal of the finished stock, right? What's this one look like over exactly. here? Exactly. So yeah, this is our finished gear. Comes out of the hover from the blank. Turns the teeth in one pass. You know, it's, it's fairly quick cycle time. And from what I understand, Kenny, talking with you, one of the unique benefits of this and working with EMAG is that oftentimes when we machine something like this, we'll have of course, op 10 will be a longer cycle time, yep. op 20 will be shorter, or vice versa. Yep. But you create a balance between where there's no idle time between each of the spindles that allow everything to be a full motion and process. Is that correct as yeah. well? Yeah, so we'll take a look at you know, how long it takes to do each tool, and then we'll try to play with some speeds and feeds to try to maybe uh, slow it down or speed it up if necessary. And this is kind of all based on what a customer desires from EMAG, right? Like yeah. you have your machines, of course. I mean, we know that they're significant German machines. Exactly. But when a customer calls you and says, I have a project and this is what I'd like to do, that's when you start adding these cells together to give them exactly what they want, right? Yes, it's, it's fully customizable, you know, to the customer specifications. Whatever we, we feel is best for them, we will integrate. It's, you know, I often think of, and I've spoken with a lot of your colleagues as well, and really great team here. I often think of Legos, which I don't think really gives the value to the machines themselves. Right. But I know that if I wanted to switch after I run my 10,000, 100,000 million parts and I'm going from green machining into hard machining, I can actually do that, right, in the yes. future. I could add on to what I've created here. Definitely. That is a possibility. Well, this is all fascinating technology to me. Kenny, I do appreciate you sharing this with the global audience at MTD. You've done an amazing job. Thank you. Guys out there, look up EMAG, really a great company. We are talking gears today, autonomous machining, 
set it up at the beginning, pull it off at the end, removing operators, combining complete processes to give you a completed part at the end of the day without multiple operations. And we all know what that does, helps reduce all of the mistakes of operator error and allows us to do things faster, better, more accurately with beautiful finish. Kenny, you are amazing. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for being here.